making handles today, I thought I'd record the process. Uh, I'm doing impulse mugs, so like this, but in dark clay, and I've got extruded handles, and I'm actually doing a, um, a set for wholesale. So there's one of every single size there, so I'll show you the um, different sizes that I've got extruded dice. But, so as I say, I extrude my handles, um, so I get, in fact this is probably twice as much as I need to start with, I get a relatively small ball of clay, um, I don't wedge it properly but I do just squidge it about a bit to make sure it's fairly even, which that is, and then I've got a handheld extruder one of the cheap ones, I think these are £30, something in that sort of region. So far more cost effective than the wall mounted ones, although obviously they're a lot smaller, but the handles they work perfectly. And then extruded dies that I got made and I now sell. But um, start with the smallest one. What you've got to do to load these extruders well, because the one problem that all extruders I've ever used have is air bubbles. So you want to make your ball of clay about the right size and shape and tap it in. And then, so you've got a ball of clay that's too big for the tube. And what I do is I rest it over the edge. So if you don't know how these work, um, the trigger moves the slider in and it can't move backwards unless that release is pressed. So what you can do is load the thing by um, pushing that lever down and then compressing the clay in. It means because the, the friction, so I've only loaded about an inch in there, um, the friction means that it loads under pressure and so no air gets in. It does mean it's slightly more long-winded than making a smaller ball of clay and just fitting it into the tube but then you get air pockets up the side, this way you don't. So what I'll then do is take the, the clay that was squidged out the outside, compress it again until it's a bit bigger than the tube, over the edge, press down in, so now I've got an inch and a half, and so on and so forth. The good thing is you don't need too much clay to do handles, so actually that will do me probably four or five handles. Um, got the other ball of clay that I'll do in a second. Uh, and if you're wondering why I'm not wearing a t-shirt today, it's because we are having a mini heat wave and the temperature hasn't gone below about 30 degrees, including at nights. For well, yeah, It's not quite true, but the problem is our buildings aren't set up for heat. Uh, we're, they're designed to keep the heat in in winter. We have no air conditioning, small windows and just can't cool anything down and so I haven't really slept comfortably for as long as I can remember. Anyway, so loaded in, um, worth washing your hands before you handle the clay. So what I'll do at this point, I've got, you know, you can see the specks of clay and just clay dust. That will get into the handle if you touch the plastic clay with dry down your hand. Then I only need one handle in the smallest size. So I'll extrude enough for one handle. And then what I do is make sure it's stretched straight. Um, I'm doing this onto plasterboard because it gives a nice soft surface that won't um, put any texture really on the handles and they release from well. They have a tendency to stick slightly to the paint on this, which means that if they lay on the desk for too long they stick and then um, you mark them when you remove them so it's nice having something like plasterboard or wood to work on that um, gives you a nice consistent surface. My small handles I do to nine and a half centimeters and this is with the smallest of my standard dies which is eight by sixteen millimeters um, and then what I do is I take a rotary grinding bit. Uh, it doesn't have to be one of these, but this is just 
This is what I stamp the peacock eye design with as well. But uh, they're just a handy tool in terms of texturing and things. And if I roll it across the end, what you see is that that has, it's flared it and it's given some texture. So now when that sticks, it'll stick really well and it'll also create a join. I mean, you, you can sort of see it there. The, where it meets the body, it just flares slightly so you get that curve to it um, rather than meeting very abruptly. Then what I do is I bend one end over, flare the other end, bend it round, and then set it aside. One of those, because there's only one small mug, there are then two each of medium and large. So they need the 9 by 18 mil. It's nice to be able to match the size of the handle to the size of the mug. Um, feels right. You can put, I, for a while I did put the smaller handles on larger mugs and they're fine, but they don't feel right. So that is all I'm going to get out of that ball of clay. The next one's a bit bigger, thankfully, because the larger handles obviously take up a bit more. Medium and large mugs are both done to 10.5 centimetres. So actually, the large ones, it depends on the, how tall and narrow the mug body is. Most of my mug designs are pretty much the same but for the more kind of wider cup designs um, you can make them shorter as you need. This is a nice comfortable two finger hold. That's that's what ten and a half looks like once it's fired. Um, if you're going to go up to three fingers, you need to be something more like eleven and a half, which is what I'll do the large ones at. And also, you need to slightly take account of how fat the handle is. If you did a an eleven and a half um, with the the narrowest die, it would feel quite different to the, with the fattest, just because how much the handle takes up. So, I'm going to repeat that. Probably just fast forward this bit. Smaller balls of clay, probably more efficient because you'll notice that a lot of this um, goes outwards as you press it. I don't know because I started doing this um, after I'd had the extruder for a little while. I don't know if a newer one would move so much easier that um, this would work better. I might just treat myself to a new one to find out. As I say, they're only 30 quid. Also, it moves easier through the last, because I basically do all my extruding at that top bit. That bit moves really easily because it never gets used. So I think it's just wear and tear. But in this heat, the mugs that I'm going to attach these to, normally making mugs is a multi-day process. I throw them one day, um, wire them off the bat and start the trimming process the next day. Day after that I'll make the handles in the morning, then hopefully by the afternoon the handles are dry enough. Um, and then I can trim the mug bodies and attach them. The mugs that I am going to attach these to I threw yesterday afternoon, overnight they dried to they're basically trimmable by the time I got back into the studio so they're in a sealed plastic box so they don't get any drier. Um, I'll make these handles within an hour or two they'll be dry enough that they will kind of meet this, the dryness of the mugs at that point I'll attach them so it's crazy efficient at the moment I'm literally doing a batch of mugs a day and then they're finished the next day which doesn't normally happen but um, also means that if I get distracted for 10 minutes, something can go from trimmable to too dry. Uh, I'm glad it's not like this all the time. 
I always make one extra handle when I'm doing this because it's trivially easy to cut one now and when everything is at the same level of dryness and you drop a handle which I don't do that often but I do do um, you can't just make a new handle and attach it and then you've got to let it dry which obviously in normal circumstances would be a whole day's worth of drying to evenly get to that even in these conditions it's not ideal so make an extra one set it aside it goes in well if you've got a damp box you can keep them indefinitely and then have them as spares but I, I kept a bunch of spares and then I never remembered to use them um, but you can just reclaim the clay if you don't use it These will now be set aside to dry relatively slowly for an hour or two until they're evenly dry, although obviously the small handle will dry faster than the big one, so something to be aware of if you've got a real mix of sizes. When they're all the same they dry pretty much evenly. And when the weather isn't like this, they dry fairly evenly. It's just because it will go so fast. So it's just a couple of hours later. Everything, the handles are now quite dry and keep their shape. Um, so I, you want to match the dryness between the mugs and the handles as closely as possible for as good a fit as possible. And these are pretty good. Um, those have been trimmed don't do the logo stamp until after you've detached the handle so that you can line it up uh, and then I've got everything I need handles, mug bodies, slip, scorer, um, smoothing tools, laser level. So what I do first is I have drawn a ruler on my hedgehog which makes it a bit easier so just check but yeah that's five and a half centimeters so what you then do is scratch a bit make sure you're putting the next the same distance down you can use the laser level because it's self leveling that gives you a vertical line to check that your scoring is right which is pretty good there um, and blob of slip on each of the scored marks make sure there's enough on and then I generously apply it to the recess in the handles. Now I do my handles so that one end slightly less bent than the other. The broader one to the top makes it just more comfortable to hold and it gives it a slight taper. So supporting from the inside press the top joint on hard then what I do is line the bottom one, push it but not into place yet and you want to make sure the laser level crosses the centre on the bottom so you need to have it high enough up that it will shine across the whole of the piece um, because that, if you have it going not across centre you could line the handle up but it wouldn't be lined up with the mug body so going across the centre of the bottom and then you check that the handle is vertical which is pretty good push it on a bit more firmly to make sure it's fixed and then support from the inside when I push on and that is now attached. What I'll do is I'll set that aside and repeat with the two other mugs here. So these are medium handles, they're a bit further away um, and then what's happening is the slip on that first handle is firming up just a bit uh, and then I'll neaten it up in a second I'll show you that. You could um, pull the extruded handles. I know some people start with it's a good way of getting a, a neat kind of blank form 
to start your pulled handles from. You know, it's consistent, it's a nice easy way to do it, but it still gives you a pulled shape to the handle. Um, that works quite well with them. And I think if you're going to do anything like that, because I don't really, I've never got good at pulling handles, I think that has to be done on a mug that's a bit softer than these. The advantage to forming your handles and leaving them is that this mug is very difficult to warp and deform, whereas I'd imagine you've got to be quite careful if you've got a mug that's more freshly th thrown and if you used a mug this dry and then pulled a handle on it I would have thought the clay would end up too wet but I don't know um, it's just this is a very easy way to make sure everything ends up um, matched in terms of dryness which will mean you don't get cracking because things joints crack apart um, when they're at different levels of dryness which means they've shrunk different amounts if they're uniformly dry and you let them carry on the rest of their drying slowly enough that um, one part doesn't dry faster than the other let everything dry evenly it should be fine, it doesn't matter you don't actually need to attach things very well in that case right, so come back round to this one that should be about long enough I've got the round angled tip um, uh, it's generally called modelling tools but just silicon tools I think I'll have a link in the description and um, you just run it around see that? run it around the seam and what you're left with is a smooth bead of slip that um, you just basically get a smooth transition from the handle to the body. If you leave it too long the slip will dry enough that it won't be moved. Um, these tools won't do it, you need something a bit more solid. But when it's still liquid-ish so it's almost like soft plastic clay at this point. Um, the more bulbous bits will be more liquid because they're drying from the clay outward. The clay is absorbing the water from them. So it will depend how much slip you put on. But um, just making a fraction. But yeah, what you're going for is rounded joints. Um, you can always come back and neaten them a bit more once it dries out again. You know, kind of different levels of dryness, you can do different things. And then I always kind of go back over and check them before putting it into this kiln anyway. And then finally, what I would do is line up with the centre of the handle, centre of the base, got my little laser cut logo stamp attached to just a handmade lump of clay um, and then make sure the bottom of that lines up with the laser roll it around to stamp everywhere and that is now stamped so just repeat it for these two and then I will go and trim the bottom of the next few mugs I mean in this sort of weather you wouldn't want to try and do more than a handful of mugs at the same time because those handles are getting drier as I'm doing these. Um, it helps as well this set is a range of sizes which means that I started with the smallest and I'm working up to the biggest which gives the bigger handle and the bigger mug body that extra little bit of time to dry because the small one will dry faster. Um, if you had say 20 or so identically sized mugs to do in this heat you would need to separate them out into batches and keep things under plastic because you get a few minutes grace in terms of drying but um, 
once you've gone past that. You can rehydrate pieces with a spray bottle and just mist them with water and actually if needs be you can take incrementally spraying a piece with water letting it soak in spraying it with water letting it soak in over the course of kind of half an hour or so you can take a bone dry piece and turn it back into fully plastic it's not worth the effort unless you have to because it's um, easy to get wrong but if your mugs dry out a bit too much and um, this is a trick that I do more with the stamped pieces than anything else but um, make sure there's no kind of specks of clay on the inside and then I just have one of the IKEA spray bottles um, full of water keep it on the desk next to me but you just spray it and hold it for long enough that um, the water's soaked in because you don't want to put it on its rim if there's still drips of water in there it will run down to the rim turn it soft and then you've lost any uh, smoothing you've got on it but let it soak in set it aside give it a couple of minutes do it again do it again and then for a stamped pattern that makes the inside surface far more plastic and um, able to take the stamp pattern without cracking so if you've got a piece that you're stamping and it's too dry just try that um, you don't really have much to lose at that point because if it's too dry to stamp and you try and stamp it without rehydrating it uh, you're going to ruin it because what will happen is you'll get massive cracks on the inside the glaze won't fill them and they'll be visible on the final piece and that's no good but um, yeah, that is how I do my mugs uh, and then finally I've got a little this is a, a Zeem slip bottle um, and I just have a couple of these kicking around this is the right slip for these pieces but it's nice to have one for each slip you're going to use um, and then I do my dots on that is a permanent marker line drawn on it will burn off in the kiln in the bisque firing it doesn't affect it in any way um, so I do the dots on the line they stick that line burns off and then what you're left with is that pattern that I showed earlier with the mug give something for the glaze to flow over and that's all there is to it really